Yeah, it definitely is. We are going to get in here. It is going to be Nip who go on to the defense here on Clubhouse. We get right into the series. Look at that beautiful intro. I really like this map. It's um, especially after the rework. It's just changed it. It's just changed it entirely. It's a much better place. Yeah, you might want to go there on your holiday one day, maybe. Over to the uh, the, the clubhouse. Go and yeah. have a drink in the bar. Have a drink in the bar. Maverick Maybe, given the theme of the map, you might want to not hang out with the residents there, but <laughs> we are going to go through into Clubhouse. It's going to be getting into the operator bands here, and we're actually going to see something very different. It's going to be the Maverick band coming up from Nip. We did see the Maverick band earlier on, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, they banned Maverick on Clubhouse when they played in their series against Liquid. That didn't quite work out for them, but the same band's coming through from Black Dragons. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, they... Banned out the Ying in the previous two maps, but the same same ban is going to be coming out across pretty much every single map we've had, not just today but yesterday as well. Glaz is not going to make an appearance. Nobody wants to go against the Glaz. That's just a fact of the matter. The Maestro ban they're going to come out, and it's going to be down on Nip as to whether they remove the mirror or not. I'm not sure if they will, but I really hope the Echo gets through because I think, I think the Echo is more viable than the Mirror at this point. The Mirror's not really influenced all too much in my opinion. It's interesting because a lot of people would say that Mirror is not really that influential on Clubhouse as she is on other maps. I would agree with that to a certain extent, but I think there's certain setups you can do here that do benefit that a lot more. The one thing I'm concerned about here as well is that Black Dragons didn't ban out the Valkyrie this time. They ban out the Maestro. So, do they think that Valk's not going to be too potent here? Because they don't seem like a team that really want to even bring the IQ here, and that might be their detriment if the Valkyrie is on the board. Not having to do with the Maestro, though, is definitely going to give them a lot more control. Um, uh, yeah, I, d I agree with what you're saying. I think I don't think the Valk brings all too much to Clubhouse. I think that's probably why she's been allowed in. But I'm not sure about the switch off Jaeger onto Pulse there. I know that Pulse is an important operator for this bomb site. There's a lot of information gathering that Psycho is going to be able to do. And of course, he has got a C4. But the grenades from Brock, the flashbangs, I'm not sure that the Jaeger... I just feel like Jaeger's maybe more of a staple pick, especially for in those last few seconds. Um, it's just lucky that uh, Black Dragons haven't opted to bring the Ying, I guess. Yeah, that is a little bit lucky. I think that Black Dragons just don't want to play the Ying. Maybe Nip will when they move on to their attack. To We've not really seen that much from them, though. Uh, in terms of like using the Ying. Five seconds remaining. Uh, we did talk a little bit about Ying before and how she can be very, very effective Attackers in sort of pushing defenders out. Attackers you can play very aggressive like Rise did yesterday. I, I don't know, what do, you, what do you think about the ban so far? How is that going to affect the defense? Well, the Maverick ban is going to make it a little bit... I, I don't know. I, Maverick's got a lot of value, but I think one of his main values on Clubhouse is like partially opening hatches and being able to throw utility down the hatch, um, which then can make it more difficult to perhaps impact trick that said hatch. So I'm not sure if you know how much that really plays in. It just seems like such a very specific circumstance. His, his use mainly is going to be in uh, keeping hold of CCTV and cash, but I mean that's a wall that we've seen open pretty much every time, regardless of whether Maverick's banned or not. Just because of the other, um, you know, other attackers that you're able to bring in uh, in the form of maybe two hard breaches or a Thatcher as well. So the Maverick ban really doesn't do anything for me. The glass ban's pretty, um, you know, the glass ban's pretty standard. It's, uh, it's something that we've not seen at all, uh, like you say, throughout any of the play days that we've had so far. Um, Jackal just making sure that he's, uh, you know, he's operating upstairs, trying to find some footprints. But Ninja Pajamas really aren't giving anything up here. Playing all down on site, which is probably the best place for them to be because there's still a lot of time being spent from Black Dragons to uh, to set up this, you know, set up the map control that they want to get and uh, and figure out where they're going to make this push from. Yeah, definitely. And we're, we're just about halfway in the round now, and I really can't see where the control is actually coming through for Black Dragons because they don't really seem to have any right now. That's not a bad thing, um, but I will say that the time is starting to stick down. They don't have Kitchen Hatch open, and I don't think any impact research actually come down yet. The main other concern for me is that, is that there's no one in Kitchen. The book isn't in Kitchen right now, and he's not really getting anything open. That impact trick is just going to happen easy as that, and there we go. Kamikaze is going to do it. There's just nothing being contested right now from Black Dragons, and they need to start doing that as we move into the final minute. 
without having much control at all of the of the map in general, Nip are just able to really slow down any sort of push that Black Dragons are trying to trying to execute here. Um, and, and it's the yeah, right thing to do because they don't need to expose themselves. This is going to end up if the hatch gets open, it might end up in a, you know a bit of a hatch drop in the final few seconds and a bit of a bloodbath. But at the moment, it looks more likely there's going to be a bit of pressure on main stairs. I think that's next thermic charge on the hatch, which is going to get impact tricked yet again. So it really is going to come down to stairs and uh, maybe a bit of a moto hatch. It looks like that's what uh, Black Dragons are setting up for now at main stairs. But they ultimately they left themselves too short of time. There's 22 seconds left on the clock. They've really not got a lot of time to start thinking about getting kills, getting control of one of the bomb sites, and getting the diffuser down. It's just not something that is really realistic at this point. The push is going to come out, however. Wag's going to be very well placed. Look at that double kill with the SMG. Doesn't quite manage to pick up the shotgun kill, but Psycho is there to get one of his own. Two versus four. Another couple of kills coming out, and it is a one versus three. Julio picking up that final kill. Great defensive round from Nip. They just didn't need to peek anything. They played it perfectly. Black Dragons weren't able to get anything open, and ultimately, that was the demise. They ran out of time. Completely shut down by Nip, and yeah, you are right. They just didn't peek anything. They played very, very safe. I think Black Dragons were just moving way too slowly throughout the map. Considering there was no roam game coming out from Nip, they had no reason to move as slowly as they did. I can't help but feel that the roam economy from Black Dragons hasn't been that efficient, because they've done this before on their attacks where they're not moving that quickly, but on coastline is not that big of a deal. On Boyer it is, and on Clubhouse it really is. There's a lot to be said for the drone work on Clubhouse, and I think you're right in what you're saying is that they're maybe not spreading the drones out well enough because there's times where you see defenders picking up like one and two drones on the site. It's important to get a site count, but once you've established that upstairs is clearing, defenders they even had a jackal to do that with as well. Absorbed on the jackal again this round. Once no footprints are found upstairs and you manage to get a couple of footprints of anyone that maybe has reinforced a hatch, you can pretty much safely assume that as long as you've got a bit of an eye on oil pit, that no one's going to be able to rotate up because you're likely going to be playing an attacker on blue or, or near, near secret spot and you're likely going to be playing an attacker on main stairs. So I don't know why they took so much time in taking the side control that they did. But then again, you can't take anything away from Nip because they just didn't need to peek anything, so they didn't. Um, moving now on to CCTV and Cash. This is looking pretty good for Ninjas in Pajamas so far. Julio's going to be placing the mirror on uh, the outside wall. I love this mirror. I know you're, uh, you're a big fan of this one, aren't you? I'm a big fan of this mirror. Um, I will say it's a bit more effective when there is a Maverick. Let me just bring it through this mirror. So he's putting it there, so they have great intel. And if someone tries to actually open it up, um, like open up that wall on east, they could just pop this mirror and you can just throw nitros through it. So Psycho can actually really effectively bandit trick here for one, and even if they lose control of the bandit and the wall, they can play off of it. It doesn't even matter if a buck goes below at this point and opens up the mirror, because they can still toss nitros through it. The point of the mirror is not to, um, to get the info and play off of it, it's to get the intel to start with, and then just completely deny the wall. So you, you're losing a mirror, but you're keeping control of the wall because they cannot get that open if you play it smart. Because you can also now impact with it as well. So I really, really love that mirror. If Nip play around it in the way I think they're going to, it's going to be insanely effective. And it's one of the things that we commented on yesterday. We were seeing that east wall be opened within sort of 50 seconds. I think that was, that's the record time that we've got so far. Um, but like you say, the mirror on that wall, it's really just going to slow down that push initially. Jackal just dropping through into logistics as Ion, just trying to find a, a little pre-fire through the wall from Jim into bedroom. But uh, nothing really doing for him there. Psycho is... Placed on the uh, on the arm, on the east wall, sorry, with his bandit charges ready to be redeployed if they are so needed. I, I hope there's an ADS over near the window. I'm sure there is on the west that goes out onto the balcony because uh, his only real worry at the moment is being uh, naded from that spot by the book, maybe. Yeah, that is definitely a very concern, and being naded from below would be a pretty big disaster as well. And the big thing I'm concerned about from ninjas here is they don't actually they're not actually contesting anything here. Like, uh, they're not downstairs at all, and there's just drones coming out downstairs at all, and... The Black Dragons have noticed the setup, and they've just completely shifted out, not even bothering that east wall at all. They know they're not going to get that open. They're going to push through west instead, and this is so bad because Black Dragons don't really have any preps for this because they didn't reinforce the construction wall. They put a soft mirror down instead. 
I think Nip are just really playing this quite slowly yet again. Ion going to pick up the vertical kill onto Julio. Three quick kills coming out for Black Dragons. That's exactly what they needed at this point. Wag looking for his second. He's already picked up one. He picks up the next one as well onto Ion. An absolute beast with the SMG 11. Three versus two now in favor of Black Dragons. 30 seconds or so left on the clock. Pino there just holding a pretty tight angle through the bomb site, but the C4 doesn't manage to connect. Pino picking up his first one from Garage Catwalk, and that's going to be the diffuser down. Wag with the second. Very low health now on Hugs Lord, all down to Wag. Pino, barrel stuffed with the shotgun for the last kill. Wag is going to take down Hugs Lord. Another round for Ninjas in Pajamas, picking up their second round of Clubhouse. So, you're thinking, you're Wag. Imagine. Close your eyes and imagine, chat. You are Wag right now. It's not looking good, it's 2v4, you know they have downstairs control, the book has just killed one of your teammates, they're taking construction and control, they've got the construction wall open, what do you do? Do you sit on the site? Do you play, yeah, I'm smoke, I need to deny the push? No. No, no. You rotate downstairs, you refrag the bandit who just died, you kill two people with the SMG-11 at long range, well, medium range, then you go up, you kill another person with SMG-11, and then you play close on construction push with a shotgun, and you take out the 4K. This man is a god. 200 QI plays. I don't even think it was like a smart thing to do. I think the, the smart Defender, thing to do was to play close attack. to the site and just play smoked and push off of those. But um, yeah, I guess he just has a huge amount of confidence in his ability to frag out on smoke, and it will work out for him. You see this a lot from Latin America. Them playing smoke really aggressively and even roaming with smoke on Oregon. Something that we've seen a lot of this evening is um, quite a, a popularity of the SMG 11 and the SMG 12. Yeah, and it's it, been working out for them. It, it really is working out for a lot of players on, on all the teams that we've watched this evening. Uh, and it's something that it, it really allows you to be very flexible as a defender if that's something that you're very good at because smoke and mutability. They're not, I'm not saying that they're interchangeable, but if you're able to play with either set of the weapons, you're really leaving yourself open with a lot of options. Definitely, definitely. So, moving into round number three, we're going to see Ninjas of Pajamas defend Cash Room, and they're bringing the castle. This is something they didn't do when they defended Cash against Liquid. We didn't see a lot of castle uh, when we saw Jim played uh, previously this evening. And it was something that we were really sort of asking for because, like you say, the castles on the windows that face out toward the balcony from the gym and bedroom, um, those are areas that can be really easy for an attacker to get a, get a you know, quite a cheap kill out of, really, without really exposing themselves all too much. Well, this is what I'm saying as well. So when you don't play the castle there, people will normally play like a bandited shield and an ADS with it. And there's nothing wrong with that except the fact there's everything wrong with that, where you can repel on the gym window and you can get a sight line above that. And even then, you don't even have to do that. You don't even have to repel. You can just hold the long angle. You can thatch it from Jacuzzi and then you can just destroy it easily enough. But Julio, already throwing out a Nitro, is already going to pick up the Ash for free. He's actually going to be playing the double mirror here in the bathroom, interestingly enough. I actually kind of like this. It just allows that second layer of defense, doesn't it, I think? My, my main issue with this is that he set it up immediately and he hasn't waited until like control located. has been found. I also don't like the fact that they didn't open the hatch in gym because that's going to allow, if they do get control of gym, you can just jump in, you can go all the way to the side rather than have to run around to where all the kill holes are. I think Black Dragons are really faltering at the moment because they've not really got a response for the bandit batteries that are on the wall. If Unless Ion goes up with a grenade, I think the ADS has already been burnt. We've seen GDN burn the, burn the ADS. Um, but Buck's not really in a position where he can deal with the bandit batteries, and it just looks as though Black Dragons are playing for picks at the moment. And uh, Ninjas in Pajamas really just aren't giving them anything. They've no reason to. Ooh, having said that, Cycle they're getting maybe a little bit too aggressive out onto Hugslow, but both players do miss their shots and, uh, and live to fight another day. I think it's maybe time for someone to get out onto CCTV and try and use that longer window to peek out onto Hugs Lord there because he's just being allowed to cause a little bit of a nuisance on that balcony. Nade going to be coming in from Ions. Not sure if it is going to connect with anybody. I don't think it is, but it'll have taken out the static camera at the least if it was still up. 
Ion's location is going to be pretty well known by this point, and he's, the smoke grenades are going to start coming in. That's going to stem the uh, the attack, but he's going to push all the way through that, which is pretty bold. He need, really needs to be getting those bandit batches off, because even though there's, well, I guess there's only 20 seconds left now, so there's probably not a lot of value in getting those off. Psycho going to pick up the kill onto GDN. Panico trading it back out onto Dino. Two more quick kills, three more quick kills coming out for Ninjas in Pyjamas. Black Dragons just didn't get anything open. It's, they just didn't really have much of a, of a foothold or anything in that round. You know, a big issue there is that Black Dragons didn't have any intel onto the site and what the setup was because they were trying to get Jacuzzi open, but it was banneted. They didn't have Thatchers. They were like, okay, we need to rotate somewhere else then. Then they tried to push through somewhere else and then they sent Ion in our solo mission, which would have been great if they knew that all of Bathroom was reinforced because since they didn't know that, Ion went straight up those stairs, he naded the side, and I think that he was nading it to stop anyone pushing him from logistics. So he pushed up, pushes up the stairs, he's crowd choking all the way through, now he has control. With 20 seconds left to go, it's not like he can destroy the bandits now and, you know, let them open up Jacuzzi, that would take way too long. His only play is to make Defenders his way into bathroom, but oh no, it's all reinforced. Attack. There's nothing that he can do now. He's completely pushed out of the site. And not only that, Julio knows he's there because he's got the mirror windows open. So the fact that Black Dragons push like that, and it's just a disaster. It's just so bad for them because they had no intel on the site and they just didn't know where they wanted to push it. I'm not sure who the IGL is at the moment with Black Dragons because they tend to change their levels quite a lot, but I don't think they're doing a good job right now of alternating the push of looking at the site and telling his team how they need to be pushing it because they seem to be all over the place right now on these attacks. I think it largely comes down to operator selection and if they'd have had a Twitch or if they'd have had a Thatcher, they would have been a little bit easier and more well equipped to deal with uh, opening that jacuzzi wall a little bit quicker. They did have the frags on book, which I'm not sure why they didn't deploy those through the drone holds, just try and get a bandit off or maybe even push bandit out from being comfortable enough. Opening up the gym wall, the gym window as well with the castle on it, that had provided a bit of a long, longer line of sight. So there were options there but they just didn't seem to take them. And I think, I'm not sure if it's a, a case that they're really, you know, faltering now. Um, and they've, they've now lost six rounds in a row, which, you know, is quite a lot of, uh, of rounds to lose straight on pistol. the bounce. Rather than the bearing. Some some people like the pistol. I... Some people really like that pistol. Some, but... some people. The, well, you know, the bearing can be can be a little bit tricky. It can be. It, and, I, and I will admit that it can be tricky, but... That's like someone saying at a pro level, I don't want to play Burke because the gun is a little tricky. That's not really the point, right? The bearing is great because it can destroy barricades much quicker than her main gun can. And also it's just great for those close quarters engagements where you're not really in a great position with the ACOG. And I really think you just shouldn't be bringing the pistol here. It just doesn't make any sense. It's disappointing. I like this strategy though coming out, that they're thatchering down into dirt, that they know where the dirt tunnel goes. You really don't see that a lot coming down on that specific push. No, that's um, that's really interesting to see. You can, he's trying to destroy any goo mines that may be in the tunnel that are going to alert the push. Um, I mean, the, the Legion's going to be alerted anyway because if goo mines get destroyed, they won't be showing up on his head's display. But I mean, still, it, it, it does just show that level of, uh, you know, thought there to, to figure out where the tunnel actually goes and it might allow him to push a little bit more effectively. Panko going to deploy his second set of ex Kairos, trying to destroy the mirror, and uh, Panko's going to lose his... Oh, sorry, Psycho's going to lose his life there, just trying to get rid of those as uh, Pino picks up a kill before that. But I think that mirror is probably going to get opened at some point. It seems as though the Yings are coming in now as well as the smoke grenades do come down to block off the tunnel. Panko picking up another kill on to Wag as another Ying comes through. But there's no one playing in this tunnel, so it is a slight waste if there was a, maybe a little bit more drone work and a bit more intel, which Hugzord is going to go for now. He would know that. Yeah, candles do come out, but it does mean they do have dirt control now. Black Dragons have got a little bit more intel going through onto the site of where people are, but oh no, I Black should know Kamikaze's there. He's going to go down, but instantly gets traded out by Hugzod. And Hugzod picks up another on the Nitro, goes out from Julio. It's a little bit too late, though. He's going to be trying to play around. The Diffuser is going to start to go down. Candles go out. Julio pushes all the way up, but now he just gets caught out instantly. Panico takes him down. Julio goes through. Blood Dragons take Brandon before on their very first attack round. That's a really big round for Black Dragons at this point. 
Um, I think if they'd have left it any longer, they would seem like a really steep mountain to climb. But one round, um, you know, to, to pick up one round out of four, it's not looking too bad for them at this point. They can still do fairly well out of this first phase. Uh, if they're able to chain another couple together, you know, who knows, we could see them going, uh, going three apiece on this opening half of Clubhouse. But I don't think that uh, that's in Nip's plan. Currently, they're going to take us back down to Arsenal room um, and they're going to give that another goal. They weren't all too far away from that. I just think that the push that Black Dragons did seemed to be a lot more uh, intel based and I think the Ying helped them a lot as well um, in, in trying to gain a little bit of control over the tunnel. Defenders, protect yeah, your bombs we will see how the rest of it does go through though as we get into round number 5 now. We'll see Ninjas in Pajamas go back down to the basement for an Arsenal defence. I'm really surprised that they reinforced all the church wall this time because this is not a regular thing for Nip to do when they set up this mirror because they really love this mirror. It's uh, hmm, it's interesting that they've reinforced Church Wall this time. Although, they've been a big fan recently of their double mirrors, and I'm wondering if he's going to double mirror onto Church Wall, or if he's going to put one on Church Wall and put one on in blue. Which, are, which is, you know, arguably a more technical mirror coming out. Yeah, there was a mirror played looking into like the bottom of Oil Pit and down Blue Corridor last time. Um, which I think uh, it was Panic Pan Co that uh, we really struggled to deal with that one. Definitely. So we are going to see Black Eyes on the board here from Pino. Still got two in his pocket to see how that's going to go through for him. There is a bit of an aggressive Roma strategy coming out here from Nip, which is interesting. I'm not really sure what their plan is here with that because he's still got a castle in his back pocket and there's still. There's still loads of utility for ninjas, but where is the setup going down here? They seem to be all over the place, but it's not going to matter because Psycho just runs all the way up. He gets the first pick of the round. Iblack's already dead. That's the Thatcher off the board. How does that happen? It's, it seems like a great loss of utility at that point. Um, I wasn't too sure what Psycho was actually going for there because it just seemed like he was kind of running around garage. There was, you know, still some castles to maybe be put down. Going for the kill. Uh, he was obviously going for the kill, but, you know... Does he really know that he's going to get it? I don't think so. It's uh, it's just an unfortunate one for Iblax that he's going to lose that gunfight uh, and get picked off so easily. And it's not going to make the push any easier for Black Dragons moving into this because, as uh, as we've seen, Thatcher can prove vital in terms of removing goo mines. Um, but, you know, not having any bandits or anything like that, Black Dragons still should be able to get open what they want to get open, saving any uh, sort of impact tricks that may come out on, uh, on, on hatches. Yeah, definitely. But we're going to see a 4v5 situation now. Black Dragon's not looking too good here. And again, moving really, really slowly. They're still droning upstairs when there's no roam game coming out anymore. There was one pick on the roam from a castle who immediately went back down to the site. So, a bit questionable from Black Dragon's. And again, like, look at the timer. 1 minute 20, they have nothing. No control. I mean, they've even been bringing jackals and still been struggling with this sort of time management element of things. And you can see there, two drones getting deleted straight away. Heck of a lot of utility to lose. And Psycho, they're playing, the, they're playing these mirrors almost for each other at this stage. It's going to make it a really tough job for Panico to get rid of that. I think he's going to give up on that endeavor. GDN going to be opening up the tunnel again and maybe looking for to call the Ying over to perhaps push down there. Um, but it does seem like the push is fairly undecided at this point from Black Dragons as to where it's actually going to come from. Yeah, they're kind of all over the place right now. They're trying to open up what they can. They've already expended a Habana charge trying to get the mirror window open, so that's going to go down. It has to be a church push, really, at this point. And nades are going to come through onto the bottom of the main door there. Castles are going to get opened up, and they're going to try and push through where they can. Kamikaze going to be playing very, very aggressively up here, playing very close to the door. 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Black Dragons have to start pushing. They have to start moving in, but just no drone work. What is happening? Black Dragons are just falling to people that they're just not even aware that exist. Loads of kills go down, and it leaves Hugzod alone, but Julio smacks him out of there. And Nip take round number five. This is really bad for Black Dragons on this attack. They're struggling really hard. Like, there's no reason for Kamikaze to play there. Okay, that's fine. That's really aggressive for him, and he should get picked. But that's the important thing. He should get picked there. And if he's not getting picked, it means you don't know he's there. So why are you pushing down bottom of main stairs if you have no intel? I mean, we could see that the way that... The, the way that Black Dragons use the drones is they tend to kind of flood them in at the same time and we've seen multiple times where two and three drones get you know destroyed within a matter of seconds of each other and they're almost trying to gather information on the same thing 
that's not to take away from the fact that how good Nip are at actually dealing with drones and hunting them out. They're doing a fantastic job of just okay, denying all that information. And especially when you're downstairs in Armory, sorry, in Arsenal, because if you can get rid of a couple of drones and you're not roaming on the site, uh, you know, you're not roaming on the map, they're really not going to have much of an idea of where you are. They're going to pre-fire common spots. They're going to be expecting things. But to play right up against main door, like Kamikaze did at the bottom of main stairs, it's just not somewhere that you're going to be expecting someone to be. The goo mines there is his perfect cue. You literally can't ask for a better cue than a goo mine because the book's now going to be distracted, pulling the thing out of his leg and all of a sudden get picked straight away. It, it's, it's really good play from Nip and they're really just taking a lot of initiative yeah, for this stage. Left. Drone economy is something that uh, European teams probably do the best out of any region. And I go. think uh, Space Station said that when they went to Dream Pack, that they were very impressed with the drone economy, Attackers even from the lower the tier teams in the EU. So we'll go into round number six. This could be the final attack coming out from Black Dragons. It's really been looking very, very bad for them. But if anything, they can take away from this. Even if they do lose this round, they are going into a winning side. But has it been the fact that this is a better side to be on and is defender sided? Or is it more that Ninja's been playing so well off of it? Ninjas have been playing very well. They they went through and stormed through attack rounds on border, um, winning five out of six. And then they won both the defensive rounds on border as well. So I think at this point, Nip are just in a position where they're doing a great job. They're really working very well as a team and they're not out here to lose this. Having said that, Black Dragon's going to open things up with an opening kill onto WAG. So no more mute shotgun or SMG 11 plays coming out. Julio just missing the head of a player out on the balcony outside of the west window of Cash. And a little bit of an early exchange there. Not all too much hit points lost on the team of Black Dragons. The wall will now be open. So it's looking pretty good at this stage for Black Dragons to gain a little bit more control, make the players that are left on site feel uncomfortable. One of Julio's mirrors there is also going to get open as Ion picks up another kill onto Kamikaze as the garage is opened up ever so slightly. Valk has got a C4 in hand. Why is she not tossing the C4 at this stage? She's going to put shots in and miss both, but she is going to pick up the kill onto Iblax as he peeks over. C4 toss going to come out from Julio, not going to hit its mark. Hugzord there, yinging into the site. Psycho does eventually pick up a C4 kill, but not before Panko takes out Julio and Psycho getting another one onto Panico. So, two versus one. It's all down to Psycho to deny this plant or get two kills and get the defuse off because the plant is going to go down. I'm not sure if the attackers are aware of where Psycho is playing currently, but Bucky's holding a very tight angle, but Pika's advantage there. Psycho is able to pick up that kill on Hugslord, narrowly missing out on the kill onto Ions. Ions gets the... Psycho gets the kill onto Ions and that is it. The defuse is going to go down. What a clutch from the Valkyrie. I think Psycho is potentially a very good player. I don't want to bank up his ego too much. He's potentially, he's potentially okay. But yeah, really well played from Psycho. And throughout this series and through his match through against Liquid as well, he's been just fragging out of his mind. He's been doing insanely well no matter what role he's been on. This may have been why the Valk ban was coming through. I mean, Valk's gun isn't really all that. It's very accurate. It's, 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 it is very accurate. It's got a one-shot kill no matter what you're on. So, yeah, but I agree. The the Valk isn't a great ideal fragger, but you can frag out, and Psycho has been doing just that. Blood Dragons are going to move onto the defense, however, not bringing the Valk out for themselves. However, they will pick up the Legion. Ah, that's a great bait. Wow. Yeah, Wag six picked on from the Monty onto the Thatcher. Legion is going to get picked out here. So no Valkyrie coming out because they spotted the Monty. I think that it's, it's a good little debate there because it's, it's made, it's, sorry, it's forced Panico onto the Legion, but Thatcher's going to be able to deal with any Legions that he may need to. Um, you know, it's just a great idea to sort of thatch the floor before you start walking into the bomb site the last couple of seconds, especially if you're looking to maybe plant the Diffuser. Ninjas in pyjamas very well placed to take this, um, and with this being our decided map, all the, all the, they're only a couple of rounds away now from the Invitational. It's got to be feeling uh, a little bit of pressure on their shoulders at this time. Yeah, the Invitational, that's the grand prize here, of course. You don't win, that's it, you don't get anything. Changing map. Nothing. Not even a penny. It's all gone for you. But this is, even if Black Dragons fall here, it was such a great attempt for them to try and take this down. But as I said, the last time that these teams went against each other, they did actually play Clubhouse, but it was much, much closer than this. And I think Black Dragons were doing much better, but 
ninjas were also making a lot of mistakes. Mistakes that they're not making now. Although, we haven't seen their attack yet. Maybe I'm a little bit too early to call that. But this is looking so good for ninjas based off their drone economy and all. I think at 5-1 at half time, most, most teams will probably call this at this point. They'll say, this is looking very, very dire. Finding four rounds in a row, this is uh, this is not going to be too well. Ninjas only have to find two to bring it in. It's the same scoreline that we left border with at this point. We left it at five one on the switch of the uh, on the switch of the side, and Nip picks up the next two rounds. Nip played this map earlier against Liquid, and they did win on an Arsenal attack. Um, they did lose a couple of times as well, but Liquid were playing very well. So Nip have obviously got an Arsenal attack that um, you know will work, and it's just all about how they execute this. I think. As players now, you've really got to be focusing on closing this out because the last thing that you want to do is, you know, start losing rounds and, you know, you know, let the, let the game get away from you, if you will. Um, they're going to really want to focus on picking up these next couple of rounds here so that they can close this game out. But it's a little bit of a slower push. They've managed to open up a, a couple of the hatches and there's just some drone work going on. But you can see there's three drones out at the moment and... That's not something that we really saw all too much from Black Dragons, especially not three drones that aren't getting shot at. Um, so Nipper obviously just gathering their information to be able to make this final execute as Kamikaze makes his way down onto the main stairs. And again, you can just see the, the drone work that's going out. You're flicking onto every member of Nip at the moment and all of them are in the drone. They've all got a little bit of information and they all know what is going to be going on within this final minute. Yeah, and this is already looking pretty good for Nib because they have a lot of control, although they are moving in a similar place to what Black Dragons were doing. They are taking a lot more control for it, but I don't like Pino being in this position right now. He does have nades on the table. He could move through and potentially nade up. I think there is actually an ADS on blue because it normally is. I see why you would be playing blue without one. Legions are going to go through into blue as well. Pino slowly going to move through. Ibox is still holding down on two just behind the boiler here in the utility room to be holding it down it goes to the pre-fire does he get the kill though oh my god he's so low in hp and there we go he does get picked up with the nitro comes out he's gonna refrag onto wag and now it's a 4v4 but so many members of nip are so far down kamikaze does pick up a kill on panico though this is not looking good for nip all of a sudden but oh my god hoaxon is gonna pick out kamikaze he takes it down psycho finds one onto ion and now it's a 2v3 nip are really Really low all across the board. GDN with a shotgun. Oh my god. Brilliant headshot coming out from GDN on the shotgun on Psycho. Black Dragons will find their first round on defense with some insanely impressive frags coming out all across the board. They lost so much control there. But again, I feel like Latin American teams are doing this a lot today and maybe overall in their region where they're setting up their execute. They start to go for it. But that execute doesn't consist of putting down smokes or droning out or yinging out or flashbanging or anything like that and trying to go for the plant the execute consists of if they if we kill them they can't deny the plan it, it does seem as though part of their plan is to like get through the doorway or get into the location that they're after whether that's the site or an adjacent room without being shot and then kind of deal with the problem from there on in yeah um like you said, we saw the Ash running in at the last moment there from Blue um, and Smoke picking up the, like, the shot for example, Freeze. A good example of that is that Buck was in Blue for ages there and he knows someone's playing behind Boiler and they must know that because two people decided to peek him at the same time, which is great um, strategy coming out from Nip. But what they could have done is he had two nades, he could have thrown one in to check to see if there's any yes. There could have been a nade from the other side for a flashbang to check if there's an ADS. There could be a nade from above to check if there's an ADS. You see the pattern here? Check if there's an ADS, then throw the nade through, and he either has to sit there and die to the nade, or he has to move out of cover and get picked by either one of you. Regardless of that, they almost lost a very critical member to that push, and this is just risk that Nip have been taking across the board, relying on their gun skill alone to push out, rather than use the utility that your operators have effectively and this is just something that's going so wrong for Latin America wow, teams today. Liquid actually did quite well to use their utility and a good point from that was how Gohan played around with his Twitch drone and his team played around it quite well. We're going to see Wag moving in onto the Monty which uh, is something that we've been asking for quite a number of rounds by this point I think um, and 
Let's see what sort of control he's able to gain over Garage. Obviously, pushing up with the Monty can be quite effective there. Um, there's going to be a little bit of stuff in his way, maybe some lesion goo mines, and certainly the barbed wire at the bottom of the stairs. So, Garage is going to be a little bit difficult. Is Pino going to be able to get through any ADS that might be down from Hugs or the C4 comes out from Ion and just removes him as a factor? Bandit batteries are going to be able to go down and it's going to make it very difficult for Julio to be able to get the wall open. He's still got two charges, so he's still got a couple of chances, but they're going to have to deal with this bandit in some way. I think some assistance now needs to be given to WAG in terms of gaining control over garage so that the garage control can then push on, move the bandit off the east wall, because ultimately not a lot's going on at the moment for Nip. They've not gained any ground whatsoever. No, they haven't. And they're starting to do work, but... Not opening this east wall up, but no, they are now going to be able to do that. Nade comes in from below, uh, sorry, Nash Charge comes in from below. They're going to be able to get this open easy as that. Just get open, but that's a little bit late coming out from them. It shouldn't matter too much because they do have a Monty Seal on the board and they should be able to push up, but it's, it is 5v4. You don't, the thing is, the advantage is getting it open as soon as possible. I don't foresee Monty doing very well in this in this scenario because there's two players that are playing up on the catwalk. Both of them are trained onto the Monty. It's going to be very difficult for someone to come in behind the Monty and get a kill at this point. But I think we're going to see somebody try it. Two remote gas canisters left. Two toxic bays left. Ooh, nearly, nearly, nearly. GDD nearly fell then, but Psycho does pick up the kill onto Uglord. Iblax does pick up the kill as a trade onto Psycho. And there is a player... Oh, GDD getting the knife kill onto the Monty. What is going on here? Why is the Monty able to push up there alone and not be able to do anything about the two players still playing on Garage Catwalk? GDN's oh. going to pick up another one onto Kamikaze. That's an insane angle. He's got no business getting that kill at all. Julio, last man standing, 30 seconds left, finds one onto Ion. He knows that there's two guys left playing in Garage, but there's another one playing at the top of Cash there, so it's going to make it very difficult for Julio to be able to push in and get anything happening here. Panko there, coming out with the peak taking out Julio another round for Black Dragons these are just such weird plays coming out from both teams uh, and again there's just no use of the utility coming out at all Wag pushes all the way up two smokes come out from Black Dragons so they're using all of their plant denial to try and kill Wag there Wag now knows well now he's just gonna die so he has to push up and he has to try and get a kill at least I mean yeah he tried to and he just got knife for it but while all that's going on, Habana is still sat outside the garage door, not really adding in anything. And then she goes for the repeak, and I guess GDN's just a god because yeah, he just takes him down easy as that. We'll see Rana Banan getting underway. We'll see how that's going to go through as we see a gym bedroom defense with a castle. I don't like the fact that uh... actually no no. I was going to say he didn't stick to the castle, but it's kind of you know, they have to go gym bedroom, right? so it, it shouldn't be. Too um, Pino though, six picked from the book onto the sledge, which is quite a nice addition. Um, that's going to enable any castle barricades to be dealt with fairly swiftly. Because uh, of course we did see Ninjas in Pajamas have a very successful defense of, uh, of gym and bedroom uh, back over in round three. They did a great job of keeping Black Dragons out. Black Dragons are ultimately left just out of time and out of luck with no real plan. Um, I think the wall should be able to be opened relatively quickly. I love the fact that they're bringing a Thatcher on Nip. It's just going to make their job a heck of a lot easier. The Thatcher and the Sledge there for me are really two, are two really good adaptations that are going to make their job a lot easier in terms of taking control of this site. Definitely. That's a nice far come coming up from Panica. It's going to give him a lot of view of what's going on in Jacuzzi. If he's put it down, in, I think he did put it down where I thought he put it down. So we'll see how that works out. We'll see exactly what they're going to do with that information. If there's something that Black Dragons have been doing very wrong uh, on their attacks, which they've been making up for their defenses, is not playing patiently and not relying on info. Obviously, info is a little bit easier on defense depending on your operator picks. And of course, they have got the Valkyrie, so that's definitely good for them. And there's been no IQ from either team, which I'm not that upset about because if you're only picking an IQ just you to counter the up. Valkyrie, not that great because you don't need the IQ. You can spot out those Valkams normally. This is... Why is there a peak coming out there? That's a really weird peak to come out. That's just wasting a lot of time, though. It's really distracting Psycho from whatever job he's meant to be doing because he's just got to hold that angle onto dirt. He's terrified of looking away. I quite like that from Black Dragons. Whoever's gone down and made that is uh, is certainly doing a good job of wasting some time. Hugzord there going to be playing a nice mirror from bathroom onto the main wall. 
and uh, Iblack is just going to be sitting tight on the stairs. I don't think there's actually any going to be anyone down on that peak, although Panico is going down there now. So is he going to be able to get a peak from this pre-opened angle? I'm not sure if Ash is still going to be holding it or not. It was a good couple of seconds ago that, that was happening. There's going to be no one there right at this moment, but I don't know. Should she hold this for a couple of seconds and see if she can get lucky? My only issue with this is that all uh, all ninjas had to do to make this angle completely useless is just put a drone down here into dirt and just hide it somewhere. And now Panico can't peek this out at all because he'll just get domed as soon as he tries to do anything because they're, they're going to know he's peeking it out. But uh, and even if the, even if he, they don't and he shoots the drone, well now he knows, now they know that he's down there somewhere because he just shot the drone and now he's probably not going to flank. But So I don't really like that, but I do like what Psycho just did. He will be opening up that mirror window and essentially all of the roam game from Black Dragons has been completely pointless because they just let Psycho do that. Yeah, the the, um, the mirror's now gone down, which is going to make holding the bathroom a heck of a lot harder. Um, and mirror's probably not going to last all too much time in there. The wall is open as well, so Thatchers can start coming in to remove any utility that could cause a problem. Wag is going to be able to do whatever he wants here, really. There's a lot. There's multiple things that Wag could do. He's going to be able to block off at least the footholds and hopefully help Julio to be able to plant the bomb because we are coming into the final 25 seconds of the round. So the plant is going to have to start going down at some point. It's still got 10 members alive on the map as well. C4 Toss comes out from Panico, but it doesn't manage to hit. Ion's going to open things up with a kill onto the Monty. That could be pretty big at this point. Julio getting one. A couple of kills getting traded back and forth there. Three versus three is what we are left with. Julio is going to be able to get this plant down as Panico is peeking the top of main stairs. Pino picking up the kill onto GDN. The plant will surely be going down now. Kamikaze picking up the kill. All now down to Ion in a one versus three situation. He's not going to have a lot that he's able to do there. And Julio is going to pick up that final kill. Closing out the round for Nip taking them onto match point. Match and series point at that as well. Just one round away from Nip to secure their ticket to the Invitational. But Black Dragons aren't out of it just yet. They have found two rounds of their own on defense. So this could go either way, honestly. This could go very much into the favor of Black Dragons to bring this into OT. It's going to be a bit of an uphill battle, though. They're going to have to bring three rounds in. But, uh, you know, don't forget, Ninjas on their defense, they found five rounds. So... This is definitely very doable from Black Dragon Speed. It's going to have to be played a little bit more passively from them. They've definitely been doing a good job on defense so far. I'm definitely not knocking them for that. Ninjas were very organized on that particular attack. And I think the Black Dragons were all over the place with their roam game, where they weren't really playing off Intel. They were playing off places where they thought would be good to play. But that, so that peak in dirt is not a bad peak to do. But the reason I was confused about it is he opens that up. He makes it insanely obvious he's about to do it where he's playing off of his jacuzzi cam. But by the time he's doing it, jacuzzi's already been opened up and they're already in. So he's not doing anything there. And by the time that he's rotating out or he's taking that angle again, Psycho has already moved up. He's taking the mirror window off. So now everything that Valkyrie did there was completely pointless. And then he throws a Nitro off based on late info and doesn't get the kill. So I just really didn't like what was happening there from Black Dragons. And again from them, it's typical because they just didn't have the intel, or they weren't playing off of it when they did. I think that the peak did just kind of detract a little bit from, from maybe what they were trying to do, and it caused a bit of a distraction for the defenders that they kind of inflicted on themselves. Um, but, you, but again, you can't take anything away from Nip in the way that we played the round. They did a really well, a really good job of managing the time. Um, they did a good job of taking control of what they needed to, and they got the bomb down, and they were able to hold the post plan. So you, it's, it's not something that you can really take away from Nip. Black Dragons have been looking pretty good on defense, though. They've won two out of the three rounds that they've been defending so far. Uh, back in round seven, they did win on this defense as well in Arsenal. But this is now match point. Nip are not going to want to leave anything to chance. They're going to want to try and close this out as soon as possible. What are they going to be able to do with this Monty? Because Wag, we've seen him do great work all night on the Monty. And then the last couple of rounds, he's just not really been able to get anything going with it. Definitely. So we're going to see match point getting underway here. Ninjas in pajamas looking pretty good for themselves. <laughs> I still feel like playing Wag on the Monty is a little bit of a crux for them. Like it's uh, it's like a comfort pick here for Wag because he'd be doing so well on it. But maybe sometimes it just doesn't even really add in anything. But we saw him just abuse Liquid with how he's done it. He's not been able to do similar things for Black Dragons, but 
there's still that potential for him to do that, and at the same time, he's acting as that armor drone. I feel like he's playing a lot more of an aggressive Monty than how Black Dragons were playing their Monty on uh, Panico. It can be important to use the Monty quite aggressively to push it into the site um, because it can enable you to gain a lot of control and I think that may be what they're going to try and do now on blue. But these goo mines are going to cause quite a big nuisance for them if they do try and do that cycle you can see there. Just putting some pre-fire shots down, just letting the defenders know downstairs that that's where they're going to be dropping from. It's going to be a very heavy blue push. Pino there just narrowly missing out on being able to get that, uh, that mirror window open. He's, he's honestly a millimetre away. He's going to fire some Xkairos through and they will do the job instead. I don't think they actually managed to get through the hole. Maybe they got self-detonated or something on the way through. I think, but I think they hit the boiler itself. And he couldn't get it he's having a real tough time finding that pixel. He, uh, I think he ne got it. Next time, just a few more millimetres down and it uh, may be a little bit easier, but it all looks like tricky angle work to me. Psycho still playing the top of the hatch, just waiting very patiently. I think that's something that Ninja's Pajama's done very well all night, but a double C4 kill going to come out from GDN. That's going to be huge. Kamikaze picking up a kill onto Ion. Another kill coming out from Wag with the Monty that he's been doing oh so well on. Two versus three is our man count in favour of Black Dragons at the moment. Monty and Kamikaze both very, very lit. The plant is going down. 20 seconds left on the clock. I'm sure the plant will go down without much of an issue. So the shotgun kill is going to come out from GDN. All going to be down to Monty to try and hold this post plant. It's not something he's going to be able to do. GDN going to pick up another. I think that makes it four for him that round. Black Dragons winning on Arsenal yet again. That, that Nitro from GDN, not only was it perfectly placed and based off of Intel, more importantly, it was really bad because of Nip. They left that default cam up, and that is like so simple. I guess it's just to shoot it, you know? Just shoot it. But that didn't happen. That default cam lasted the entire round, and then it allowed GDN to go for his own flank as well. This is some really sloppy work coming out from Ninjas, I'm not going to lie. We've seen it before where teams really struggle to convert once they get to where they need to be. They get themselves to match point, they do the hard work, and it just they struggle to get themselves over the line. We saw it last night with um, SSG a couple yeah. of times. Well, know. Lycan also mentioned it in his interview, is that uh, he did not have... Well, they don't really have a good time of trying to close out matches. It went to a very similar scoreline to what's happening now, where it was like 6-5, and then eventually they were able to close the match. I'm hoping that Ninjas don't cause it to be such a close goal and they can close it out now. Their attacks have not been that impressive though. Uh, I think Black Dragons is playing a little bit better off of Intel this time though. Um, but obviously we, we always talk about you know attack and defense most times and most maps are defender sided. I don't think it's not the fact that the map itself is poorly designed, but that the game does recognize the defenders is a little bit easier to play just in terms of like you know get the whole you get the whole map for free and you can do whatever you want with it and you know a lot of the steps can go through it could be very very smart black dragons have been playing off that quite well and you know they've had a lot of intel but ninjas kind of defeated themselves on that last round and it kind of, a lot of it came down to that default cam that was something really that was a big mistake i like the addition of ying this time on wag sticks picking off the monty that could really help them to push into Garage because Garage was something that Wag really struggled to take last time that uh, Nip attacked on this location. Um, there was a couple of guys playing up from Black Dragons on Catwalk and they caused themselves a real nuisance to Wag. He really wasn't able to get anything going and it really didn't help his, his old team push either because, you know, Garage control is quite important when you want to start trying to get this wall open, uh, remove the bandits multiple things that can happen through garage and as a monty it's a good place to try and take the monty didn't work for him i do like the addition of the ying um in this scenario because i think it'll aid him a little bit in, in you know getting the control of what he wants because the shield just really isn't working out as well as it was versus liquid for him definitely right, there we go thermite is going to start to open stuff up a really big hecking hole coming right up for him to do two minutes left to go on the clock this is good work coming out from ninjas already getting that wall open when there's no maverick and there's a bandit on the board is great players coming out from ninjas because as i said average time to get that east wall up is about one minute 40. if you're doing it before that that's really good work the attackers bomb the yeah it gives them a lot of options it just really removes 
the the site from from anywhere that the defenders can play and it just forces the defenders to either pick a side and then there's a long rotation if they do want to try and get to the other side of the, of the bomb site because the, the middle just sort of becomes a bit of a no man's land i guess that cash area that, that cctv area sorry uh, with cash and garage being the areas either side of it but some kills are going to have to start coming out pretty quickly if Nip are going to make a successful push here. They're of course going to want to look to get the diffuser planted and pick up a couple of kills along the way. You can see there some good shots coming in from a player underneath from Nip, just desperately trying to get the kill onto the mirror. Panico getting a little bit aggressive there, just seeing if anyone's outside on the east balcony, but there isn't anybody playing that currently. He can feed that information back to his team and his teammates will be able to respond appropriately, maybe just making a bit of a rotate through, but it looks as though we've got a player on the Nip side that are gonna be going up and they're getting on the repel. The smoke grenades are gonna come through to kind of block that line of sight and to deny a little bit of access there. Moving into the final 40 seconds, let's see what they can do. Yeah, let's see what they can do indeed. Still 10 men up. And we'll see how that goes through. But as I say it, Psycho finds the first kill of the round. Finally, Panico goes down. That's the Legion down off the board finally, and that's gonna mean that there's no impacts left remaining on the board from Black Dragons. This is not looking good for them at all. So we'll see, Ibox just trying to play on the top of East. Does just have an ADS here, just have barbed wire further down, but he peeks and Psycho takes him down. Pino takes down one, but GDN is gonna refrag back. Now it's a 2v4. The Nitro will miss. It's all down to GDN and Ion to try and bring it in. But Ion goes down. It's all down to GDN and a 1v40. Can't find it. Pino takes him down. Ninjas in pajamas will be going to Montreal next month for the Grand Invitational for Rainbow Six. Woo! That was intense. Nip did a really good job of closing that out then. I think they went out with a, with a good amount of style there and uh, certainly a very well-deserved victory. Certainly a very well-deserved victory coming out from Ninjas. A very, very close series. And uh, a little bit, little bit like how SSG ended as well.